Finally, let's just do a few last little points about um, our financial advice for the early 20s. Uh, one is this idea of building credit. Now, what you will find is that early in your financial life, your credit score will actually matter. Uh, your FICO score, or your credit score, uh, is used mostly for two things. Uh, one is when you're renting apartments, sometimes but not always. Um, some of the larger apartments will actually check your credit score. I had that happen to me once when I was in graduate school. Um, but at the same time, we know that a lot of places you might rent are, are just run by, say, individual people, and they are somewhat less likely to check your credit score, but they, they might possibly do it. Okay, so renting apartments is one case. The other is qualifying for a loan, whether it be a car loan, a personal loan, a mortgage, what have you. But now remember, your goal at least for most people, is to make the FICO score irrelevant within a few years. Right? Eventually, what is going to happen is you're going to buy a house, in all likelihood, once you settle down. Um, although, I would note, there's nothing wrong if you just want to move around your entire life. That's fine, too. Um, personally, it would not be for me, but that's possible. But most people are eventually going to want to buy a house and settle down, at which point their goal is really to pay off all their loans and not have to borrow money anymore. In which case, your FICO score won't matter. So, at the same time, early in your life, it will actually matter, especially as you're in your 20s and 30s. So, my, goal, my idea there is for you to build a good credit score, uh, apply for two credit cards. We like to see multiple accounts to prove that you can handle having multiple sources of credit. Um, and then every month, pay them off. Now, you don't have to carry a balance on your credit card in order to build credit. That's totally a myth. Um, Rather, it will appear on your credit report. You can actually get copies of your credit report yourself. You're allowed um, to get them from each of the um, agencies that keeps the credit reports once every year. Uh, so you can pull it up, and all it's going to say every month that you actually pay at least the minimum payment, it will say paid as agreed. If you pay the entire balance, it will say paid as agreed. If you pay the minimum payment, it will say paid as agreed. All right, so it doesn't actually matter whether you pay the minimum payment or pay the entire balance in terms of building your credit a credit score. Uh, actually, it ends up that carrying a low balance um, or no balance at all is quite helpful because it helps your credit score to have unused credit available to you. So keep the balance low or perhaps zero. That is actually helpful. Then once you have these two credit cards, only use them for things like rent or gas, these things that are probably not going to be affected by the fact that you're using a credit card. Another key point, something you don't want to forget about, and it's easy to forget about when you're relatively young, is insurance. Right? Insurance is very important because it helps you uh, avoid financial disasters. There are lots of things that can happen in our financial lives that can really cause serious problems for us that will burden us for years on end if we're not prepared for them. And in our early lives, we don't have a lot of savings built up, at least most of us don't. So it's absolutely essential, if you don't have much money, to have insurance. Is you need one of those two things to get through major expenses. Um, so for example, health insurance is very important. Um, now, this is something where, um, since the Obama law passed, health insurance is something we don't even necessarily think quite as much about, oh, should I get it or not, because we all have to get it, or will have to get it in the relatively near future. Um, health insurance is very important simply because sometimes things happen to you that health insurance will cover that will be exceptionally expensive if you don't have health insurance. I think of things like cancer. Right? Cancer is extremely expensive to treat, um, besides you know, all of the emotional stuff that goes into um, having cancer. You have the financial side of it, so you may as well minimize the financial side as much as possible, and health insurance helps to do that. Um, disability insurance. It ends up, anybody with a job, in all likelihood, has something that can happen to them that will make them unable to do their job anymore. Now, in my case, I can actually sit here and make economics videos, even if, say, I'm confined to a wheelchair. Say, I get in a car accident and I break my lower back. I can still teach economics online. I can still do it in the classroom, for that matter. I just you know, take my wheelchair, I wheel myself to the classroom, and I teach from my wheelchair. There's nothing um, stopping me there. But at the same time, exactly the right, or I guess the wrong, type of head trauma would make it impossible for me to do my job. If I can no longer deal with words as poorly as I already do, if I can no longer deal with them in quite the right way, um, I'm not going to be able to teach. 
I'm not going to be able to lecture, I'm not going to be able to grade papers. Right? So there are all these things that can happen that will make me unable to do my job. For that reason, I carry disability insurance because these things do actually happen, and it is possible, and if it does happen, I want to make sure I'm prepared. Um, I'm also a fan of term life insurance, if somebody's really depending on you being alive for their own financial well-being. In my case, uh, my wife is a freelance writer. Uh, freelance writers typically do not make a lot of money, nor do they make it um, on a consistent basis. So we're living mostly on my income being the consistent income we can count on. Um, I also have a son, another child on the way at the time that I'm making this video. Um, so these people are going to depend on the income that I provide. Um, if I were to go out and die in a car accident, something that does happen, uh, they're going to have serious problems financially. And apart from, and in addition to, the emotional burden, they're going to have to bear this financial burden. So to minimize that, we carry some significant term life insurance. Now at the same time, if you are really in a position where nobody's really depending on you and the income you can earn, for example, you're a single person, you don't have any dependents, right? you're, you're not having to care for elder, elderly parents, what have you, then odds are life insurance is a big waste of money to be perfectly honest. Um, I would also say that carrying life insurance on, say, children tends to be a waste of money. Um, anything beyond, say, helping to pay for their burial, I mean, you really don't need life insurance for them. After all, if my son dies, it's very tragic, um, it's very sad, it's, emotionally it's a big burden, but financially it's not. Right, so we need to think about where would there be a financial burden created and having insurance to cover us in that case. Um, also, renters or property insurance is a good idea. Renters insurance you can get often for as little as 10 or $15 a month and will cover you in case, say, somebody breaks and steals your stuff or your apartment building burns down or what have you. It will help you to replace all of the stuff that you've lost. Okay, so renters or property insurance is actually a reasonably good deal for the kind of coverage you're getting. Now, one thing I'd note is that some of these, once you get your savings built up, you may not necessarily need forever. Um, for example, term life insurance, odds are when you're 65, term life insurance will not be necessary anymore, because by then you should have enough savings built up that your ability to earn an income is not actually that important. Um, the same thing would go with, say, disability insurance. Um, once you've retired, well, disability insurance isn't quite as important. Health insurance becomes more important as you get older. Um, renter's insurance or property insurance generally becomes more important as you get older as well, as you have more stuff that could possibly be lost. Um, but as far as you have savings that can help you replace that stuff, and you're fine using the savings for that purpose, it may not be necessary to cover um, quite as much with insurance. Um, so there we go. To sum things up, about personal finance. Um, first, budgeting is really all about putting yourself in control, making decisions for yourself, and then sticking to those decisions. That's what the budget is for. Saving and investing is then built around protecting yourself from financial disasters and building wealth for the future. Important thing to keep in mind through all of this is that it's really a psychological battle. You need to make sure that you design a good plan that you can follow, and that's better than a perfect plan that you won't follow.